Global warming will hit Bangladesh hard. With 150 million people in an area roughly the size of Iowa, Bangladesh is one of the most densely populated countries on Earth. With 80% of its landmass floodplain, Bangladesh has long been vulnerable to rising waters. But now, an environmental catastrophe is unfolding here, triggered by global climate change. The river has taken away our house. We lost everything and had no place to go. We had 40 acres of land that reached almost two miles from here. If sea levels rise by one meter by mid-century as predicted, Bangladesh could lose one-fifth of its total landmass. While Bangladesh's contribution to climate change is tiny, a Nobel Prize-winning panel of scientists recently warned that flooding due to global warming could leave 20 million homeless here by mid-century. We are the victims of what the first world is doing. Every inch rise in, rise in the water level here is hundreds and thousands of people who have lost their land, who have lost their homes. A United Nations Adaptation Fund was launched in 2008 to help poor countries like Bangladesh finance projects to blunt the effects of global warming. However, the fund remains an empty shell, largely because industrialized nations have failed to make donations as promised. Today, the fund holds just $18 million, a tiny fraction of the estimated $75 to $100 billion a year the World Bank estimates developing countries will need to adapt to climate change. But the Bangladeshi government, NGOs, and self-starters like architect Mohammad Rezwan are not waiting for the international funds to arrive. In a remote corner of northwest Bangladesh, Rezwan saw a need caused by increased flooding in his community. Every year, uh, schools are flooded for uh, three to four months. During the flood last year, 330 schools were completely destroyed. I thought if the children cannot come to school, then school should go to them. He started 11 years ago with $500, one computer, and a vision. Since then, his project has expanded and now includes a small fleet of 22 school boats that harness the power of the sun to run computers, solar lamps, and wireless internet connections for 1,500 students. Half the world away from home, Mohammed Rezwan has been invited to showcase his latest innovations at a World Bank contest. Rezwan receives no funds from the cash-strapped Bangladeshi government for his projects. Instead, he relies entirely on grants from foundations and awards from competitions like this one to keep his ideas moving forward. Rezwan is one of five finalists from Bangladesh at the contest, and he is seeking $200,000 to scale up his ideas. At the COP15 Global Climate Treaty Talks in Copenhagen, industrialized nations have agreed only in principle to make payments to help developing countries like Bangladesh adapt to global warming. But there is still no concrete plan to raise the huge sums needed and no consensus on how much these nations are expected to contribute. In response, many developing countries have signaled they will not sign a new climate treaty unless they get sufficient money to start adapting to a warmer planet now. We are facing the climate, the reality of the climate change today. The West will face it tomorrow. Mohammed Rezwan anxiously waits for the news that could forward adaptation efforts in his community. And now to announce the final winner, project number 1358, Adapting Native Andean Crops for Food Security in the Face of Climate Change. When it is all over, 25 finalists out of 100 receive funding, but not one of the Bangladeshis received an award. I guess they don't think climate change is impacting Bangladesh. <laughs> As Rezwan and his fellow contestants pack for home, they pin their hopes on world leaders at the COP15 climate talks for the funds they will need to keep their climate adaptation ideas afloat. There are many countries like Bangladesh. They need the support, and these countries, they are looking forward to the COP15 to become a successful event. For World Focus, this is Steve Sapienza.